Hi everyone and welcome once again to Ruby's Classic Cooking and today I'm making monkey bread. Now I have no idea where that recipe name came from but maybe it's because it's fun to eat. I don't know. Maybe somebody said it's more fun than a barrel of monkeys. Now you can see I've got my bread machine out here this morning and one of the things I need for monkey bread which I consider to be a dessert. <clears throat> to me, it's sort of a crossover. Some people make this and eat it for breakfast, but I find there's way too much sugar in this for breakfast, so you know what? It makes a great cake for a potluck. Well, kind of a cake. It's kind of odd because it's bread, but it's not bread. A bit like panettone, I guess, because that's bread, but it's also like cake. Anyway, let's get into the recipe. Now, I've got up my bread machine because I'm making a batch, I made a batch of roll dough this morning, which I've already done. And if you want to see how I did that, just watch my roll dough recipe because I'm going to link that one below. Anyway, it is a easy one to do because I just make a batch of roll dough in my bread machine. Now, if you don't want to use roll dough from your bread machine, you can also buy those, you know those cardboard cans of rolls, you can buy some of those. Two or three cans, depends on how big a batch you want to make. Or you could even buy, I've seen frozen bread dough in the, in the uh, grocery store, and you could buy a, a loaf of that too. So this is by far the cheapest alternative to making that. And you know what, when you read the contents of those canned, those rolls in the cardboard can, I was appalled at how much, how many different chemicals were in there that were preservatives to keep it from rotting in the refrigerator. I'm like, hmm, you know what? I'm just going to whip up a batch of fresh roll dough, throw it in here, come back in two hours, and boom, it's ready to go. So that's what I did this morning. Anyway, this is my friend's recipe that she, uh, that we actually had as a fundraiser, and I paid a whole dollar for this recipe from her. But I've made my own modifications over the years. Now, I'm just going to make this bread machine disappear by the magic of video. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm just going to put my rolled over here for the moment while I make the topping for my monkey bread. Now, there's more than one method to make a monkey bread. Some, some recipes just say to take your rolled dough and cut it up into about one inch balls and then roll it in cinnamon sugar. And if you don't know how to make cinnamon sugar, if you're still buying it at the grocery store, the recipe for doing that is very simple. You just take a half a cup of white sugar, plain old white sugar, um, and you mix in with that three teaspoons of cinnamon. Now that's 125 milliliters of plain old white sugar mixed in with 15 milliliters of cinnamon, okay? Just do that, put it in a nice tight container, give it a nice shake up, and mix them together, and there you have cinnamon sugar. And if you want to put cinnamon sugar on your toast, yum, total yum. I don't do it very often because I don't need that kind of sugar in the morning, but you know what? It's so delicious. Anyway, that's not the method I'm going to use this morning. I've got a bit more complicated uh, recipe going on here, and I've got in my, in my, in my uh, pitcher that's microwave safe, I have a whole cup of butter. Hmm, yes, a whole cup of butter. This is not a low calorie recipe. My husband calls it evil because every time I make it, he gains five pounds. <laughs> but he loves it. <laughs> anyway, a whole cup of butter, which I'm going to melt. So if you don't have a microwave, you can put this on the stove in a pan. Okay, so there we go. There's my one cup of butter. And to that, I'm going to add a cup and a half of brown sugar. One, and I'm using a half, I'm using a half cup here, so remember your mathematics, three one halves equals a cup and a half, because one half cup plus one half cup equals one full cup. So, there's one full cup of brown sugar and a half a cup. really helps when you're cooking if you know your math and know your fractions. I know. What are you talking about, Ruby? They didn't bother teaching us that boring stuff in school. I've got my calculator for that. Well, great. Use your calculator then. Okay? It'll save you a ton of time in the kitchen washing up if you know, if you know that three of these is the equivalent of one full cup plus one half cup. <laughs> 
Helps you out a lot. All right, there's my butter and my brown sugar put together. Next in is a teaspoon of cinnamon. Now, if you don't like cinnamon, or if you uh, happen to have a cinnamon allergy, you can use nutmeg instead. So I'm just going to put in a teaspoon, a nice generous teaspoon of cinnamon in here, because nobody at this party is going to have a cinnamon allergy. There you go. Next up. Okay. Next ingredient I should have prepped first, but it's a cup of chopped pecans. Now, now when I'm buying pecans, I always pecans, pecans, however you say them, tomato, tomato, potato, potato. I always look at the price of the pecan halves rather than the uh, rather than the, the pecan pieces. If they're the same price for the same amount of pecans in the package, I buy the halves because it only takes me a few minutes to chop these up. And I can use these halves for a lot of more um, decorative purposes than I can um, pecan pieces. Plus which, you know what? You have a much better chance of looking at this and going, yeah, that's an actual pecan, than if you buy a chopped up bunch of nuts. Because it could be pecans, it could be walnuts, it could be a mixture. You know, you don't know. But if you have your actual pecan halves, they're quite distinctive looking. So, just a little buying tip from me. I'm just going to chop these up and I won't make you watch this. And then I'm also going to add to this, I'm going to add some, I have some glacé cherries, red and green, and some glacé fruit left over from my uh, Christmas baking. And it's July, but you know what? It's still good. And I'm going to add a half a cup of raisins. And these are Thompson raisins. Um, you can use whatever kind of seedless, seedless raisins I would advise to use that you happen to have on hand, okay? So I'm just going to measure. In fact, before I start chopping, is once I get into this glacé fruit, it's a very sticky business. So I'll bring you all back when I've got these all, all cut up. And I'll just measure up my half a cup of, of raisins while I'm panning here. That's generous amounts. That's a few raisins among friends, right? I just don't go too crazy. Now my recipe says to put all these things in the bowl and then, then leave it in the microwave until your butter is melted. That's my one cup of pecans. That's 250 milliliters. And I'm now going to drop that right into my contain my oops. Let me bring that out here where you can see it. I add my pecans to it. All nicely chopped up. You can see what size I've chopped them here. You don't want to make them too tiny, but you also don't want to have them so big that people are struggling to eat them. And gather up all your dust from your nuts. After all, it's all part of the pecans. Oh, it's the flavor. There we go. Now, I'm going to do a half a cup of glacé fruit. And I'm going to mix my... My glacé cherries and red and green, and I'm going to tell you something. You buy these glacé cherries at Christmas time in November, and next July they're still fit to use because they're loaded with sugar. <laughs> they're nothing but sugar. Well, they have two ingredients: cherries, food coloring, and sugar, <laughs> which is why I don't use them very often. I'm just going to add some of this because you know what? It's Canada Day. I'm making a special dessert for my daughter's party. I'm just going to add a couple handfuls of this. My hands are clean, by the way. I have washed my hands. And now, I'm going to do what I always do to my glacé cherries. I'm going to dump them out of my cutting board. And I'm going to cut each one in half. Because over the years, I have discovered that sometimes their their machine misses a cherry pit. And let me tell you, it's three thousand dollars if you bite down on a cherry pit and have to go to the dentist and have a crown replaced. Let me tell you, it can be a very expensive cherry. So I like to cut them in half. Because believe me, if there's one pit in this whole thing, I'd be the one eating it. <laughs> 
And there you go, mixture of red and green cherries, which I'm now going to throw in here on top of everything else. Which you can't see because I've hidden it behind my bread again. There we go. So that on top. Yeah. I'm now going to wash these sticky hands off, and I'll be right back to show you what happens next. Okay, well now this is going to go into my microwave, and I'm probably going to put it in there for a couple of minutes anyway until the butter starts to melt and then I'm going to take my good old wooden spoon and my scraper and I'm going to scrape them down. Now my bread, I'm going to be turning that out on my, my surface here and I'm going to be cutting it up into rough chunks about, about two and a half centimeters, about an inch in size because I'm not rolling and I don't have to roll them into balls or do much of anything to them because you know what? They're all going to bake together and they're going to make like a loaf of bread. Oh, yes, I haven't showed you what I'm going to bake them in yet. Just a second. My bun pan, which is 9.75 by 3.8 inches or um, 28.24 by 8.5 eight centimeters. 24 by 8.5 centimeters. So that's my bun pan. You can use an angel food cake pan. I like to have it like this because I guess this makes a difference to it. You can also cook them in mini bun pans if you want to, which I have done before. But for right now, I'll be back when this is ready to put together. And while my, my filling is uh, zapping in the microwave, I'm just going to turn up my roll dough and start working with it. Okay, I'm just going to start breaking this down. You just take your lump of dough. I start by cutting it in half. Okay. And then I just start cutting it up just randomly into lumps. This I've got to cut it down smaller and smaller until I've got my one inch lumps. Just roughly two and a half centimeter, one inch lumps, just just cut them up here. No need for precision because it's all going to merge together again into one nice big loaf of bread. Cake. Whatever you want to call it. Monkey bread. Now personally I don't think I'd ever eat this for breakfast because I find it too sweet but then again some people eat danishes every day so I suppose they would probably find this very acceptable for breakfast. It's great for a crowd. If you've got a crowd over at Christmas time or, or you're going to a big potluck like I'm going to today or something like that, then you just uh, whip up some of this. Everyone will rave about it and uh, they'll have a lovely dessert. It's best served warm, but you can also serve it cold. That's why I guess it's a good breakfast food, because um, you just serve it warm out of the oven. And here we are back from the microwave. It's still pretty bubbling hot. That's why I'm handling it with oven mitts. And let's give this a stir. I want to mix my fruit, my nuts, my brown sugar. I'm going to mix those all together equally. Make sure they absorb up all that melted butter deliciousness. Because as this bakes in the oven, this is going to make one lovely caramelized sauce to go all over your uh, go all over your bread. If you choose the cinnamon sugar only method, you cut your rolled dough up into balls like this, like I have here, and then you roll those in melted butter then you roll them in the cinnamon sugar, then you put them in your pan and you bake them. Now this is going to be baked in my oven at 300 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 150 degrees Celsius, for 45 minutes. But it doesn't take a long time to cook. That's probably because it's a bun pan. But like I said, an angel, a 10 inch angel food cake pan or 25 centimeter angel food cake pan will do just as well. Now. This is what I like to do with my mixture. Now, I take my pan, which I'm going to be able to show you this because I covered my countertop with these. Now, to be official, you're supposed to let this cool off, but 
I forgot to read the recipe and guess what? I don't have time to let it cool off. So, oops. <laughs> Hope this doesn't do anything bad to my to my recipe. I'm just going to take about so I'm just going to take about a third of my mixture here. I've got my mixed cherries, nuts, well you saw everything that went in here, raisins. And I'm going to put this, I'm going to put about a third of it right here in the bottom of my pan. And if you don't have a non-stick pan, be sure you grease it well. You definitely want this cake to come out of here nicely. But I just like to put about a third of it around the bottom. Just to make a nice layer here. Because when you turn this out of your pan later, that's going to be the top of your cake. And you want it to be, you want it to have lovely things in it. Lovely stuff looking at, right? So, now I'm just going to randomly pick up my roll dough off of here. About half of my pieces of roll dough off of my counter here. And I'm just going to chuck them in here. Just spreading them out evenly all around the pan. Try to create like a, see inside here, I'm just kind of randomly throwing them in here. Just to make sure they get distributed around the pan. Now. That looks like about half. I'm just eyeball these things. There you go. Now I'm going to put another third of my mixture on top of my roll dough here. Spinning that around. Just going to spread it around here equally. Just this yummy, delicious mixture sugar, brown sugar, all oh, it's going to caramelize and do lovely things to this bread dough. There we go. And now, I'm just going to throw the rest of these roll pieces in here on top, and if I think one looks too big, I just pull them apart. <laughs> Alrighty. And now I'm just going to put the rest of my mixture over the top, just like spooning it all around here, spread it out. Well, it smells so divine. Yum. Cinnamon, brown sugar, butter mixture together. Oh, yeah. This is a fabulous recipe for Christmas potluck. Yummy delicious. Let me tell you. Okay. There it is. Now it's all ready to go right into my preheated 300 degree, 150 degrees Celsius oven. And that's 45 minutes. And when it's out of the oven, I'll bring you back to show you the final product. Hi everyone, and here's my monkey bread, fresh and hot out of the oven. Look at that, doesn't that look absolutely gorgeous and delicious? It smells amazing. Now the very first thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to leave it sitting right here in this pan for 10 minutes. And then I will be putting it on my platter, which is right here. That's about a 34 centimeter or 13 and a half inch platter, larger than so the circumference of your bun pan here, so that your all of your cake goes in the middle and there'll probably be some of the the, uh, the caramelized sauce that'll pour, puddle around it and when I when that happens I just take my spoon and I kind of pour it over the top of my bread bread cake bread slash cake whatever anyway I'll come back in about 10 minutes and I'll show you what it looks like when it's all turned out on the pan okay here comes the big moment of truth it's been 10 minutes so now, here we go, one, two, three here, keep your fingers crossed, and let's go, one, two, three, ah! Oh, it's not going to stay in one piece, but it looks pretty good, see, look at that. That 10 minute wait gives it a chance to cool down. It gives your caramelization start time to start warming up here. And there you go. A beautiful ring of caramelized, covered with fruit deliciousness. Yum. I hope you enjoyed my video today and I hope you'll like, subscribe, and join me next time on Ruby's Classic Cooking. See what I'm cooking next time in my kitchen. Till then, bye for now.